Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. If you guys didn't know, there is an ongoing roadmap for War Thunder, and today we have some huge news that will fundamentally change ground vehicle damage and also damage to the crew. I mean, this is absolutely huge and somewhat complicated. This is actually a fairly detailed dev blog, so I'm going to read it verbatim and then kind of give a synopsis on what each of these points means, at least in my opinion, and also possibly how it will impact the game. And this will be huge. Again, when I say a fundamental difference in how ground vehicles function and play, that's what I mean. This is probably one of the biggest changes to ground vehicles that we've seen in years. So as I said, let's go ahead and start this off. Basically, this starts off where it says additional effects on vehicles when armor is penetrated. And it starts off with, most of us have experienced situations where penetrating lightly armored IFEs and APCs with large empty areas causes the shell and its fragments not to destroy or disable any crew or modules. This could also happen to tanks that are penetrated by shells with a narrow damage zone as well. When this happens, the shell and its fragments pass close to crew members and modules and sometimes even hits them, but is not usually enough to cause sufficient damage to stop the enemy from being able to fire back, at least for a short time. We understand that this can be frustrating for the player who fired the shot, as from their point of view, they did everything right. The enemy vehicle was hit, perhaps even close to vital modules, but they were subsequently unlucky. So that basically is the primer for everything that we're going to have henceforth. And that says, we're proposing three ways to solve this problem problem and plan to implement them in parallel. So they're going to implement three different things simultaneously. It doesn't say in this roadmap exactly when they're going to be doing this. They are kind of saying probably sometime summer or spring 2024, but nothing concrete insofar as a specific date or update. Now I said the first way is to introduce a more detailed damage model to specific vehicles. There will be new types of modules ranging from electronic modules for air defense vehicles, machine gun ammunition, electronic equipment, as well as detailing and correcting guidance modules such as the drives. This is labor intensive and painstaking work however, as it cannot be implemented for all ground vehicles in the game at once. Each vehicle would require separate manual work. In particular as part of this task, we're currently separating and detailing the elevation and traverse drives of the M1 and Leopard 2 series of tanks. With the addition of a hydraulic drive supply tank, where disabling this part will also disable the guidance drive so <laughs> it, it's kind of a meme at this point but they're again going after the m1 even though the m1 probably at least for what many people have said should be buffed in so far as its armor is concerned instead of a buff this seems like it's going to be another way to screw over the m1 and also for that matter the leopard 2 we'll have to see but this isn't just going to be the m1 and the leopard 2 i'm sure that they're going to be doing this for a lot of vehicles to start of course not all vehicles they'll probably focus on more modern vehicles but these are just the two examples unfortunate examples that they give considering their history with the m1 and also kind of i guess maybe the leopard or two basically again to summarize they are going to be adding a whole bunch of more modules to your vehicles that could be destroyed and thus upset you and uh possibly screw you over well not really screw you over it's just a little bit more realistic but anyways that said the second way is to introduce new logic for damaging crew members and modules, which will reduce the likelihood of the situations we've described above, as hits will be effective even in these cases. Here's how it'll work. Any hit to a crew member causes a stun effect. When stunned, the camera will shake and sparks will be shown on your screen for a short period of time about one to two seconds. Dealing damage to the gunner or commander in vehicles with duplicate controls causes a few seconds of concussion. It also causes the camera to shake, a ringing effect in your ears, and a temporary drift with a variable vector, aka a change in direction, is added to the gun aiming, which you'll need to compensate for manually. In this case, the initial aiming point when armor is penetrated moves away at the moment of receiving damage, taking into account the favor kills mechanic to a random distance and direction within approximately one quarter of the screen so basically what this means is that if you get hit and your crew member is damaged uh, let's say for example in this instance the gunner what will happen is they get stunned so you won't be able to shoot for another second or two and worse yet the cannon for whatever reason will drift a little bit so it could drift like three feet above the enemy vehicle or four feet to the left or something it's a little bit weird they don't really say exactly and really it says 
one quarter of the screen. So if you're aiming, for example, two miles down range to shoot at somebody really far away, of course, one quarter of the screen is going to impact your vehicle, your projectile trajectory substantially more than if they're right in front of you. But again, this is basically going to be some sort of cannon drift mechanic and also crew stun mechanic. And then it says, finally, the third way is additional sources of fire in the fighting compartment, where damage to internal modules in this area may cause them to start an internal fire. Several things can burn and smolder inside a vehicle. Crew clothing, wiring, machine gun ammunition, plus rubbish and oil on the floor. In this case, the fire can go out on its own, unlike an engine or fuel tank fire, and the damage it causes will be less than the damage caused by an engine or fuel fire so basically you're going to have uh your crew catch fire when a shell goes through and i wonder if this is going to be different for something like heat fs for example where essentially if i'm not mistaken it's like a hot plasma almost in a way that it fires into the crew compartment which might increase its post pen damage because then it might set crew clothing on fire or something we'll have to wait and see exactly but basically just to kind of give you guys an idea we're going to have three different ways for your crews or for your vehicles in general to die a little bit more easily first and foremost you're going to have more things that can be damaged or destroyed because you're going to have more modules secondly your crew members are going to take damage a little bit more effectively than they were before so basically what i mean is again stun effect this might impact loaders as well could stop them from loading for a second or two let's say if they have their arm ripped off but are still somehow alive and then third of course they can also catch fire on the inside of the crew compartment so it's going to be a few different things here but basically, it sounds like that first hit advantage is going to be even greater. So what I mean by that is if you shoot at somebody first and you hit them, even cause a little bit of damage, that little bit of damage now seems like it could end up being a lot of damage to an enemy vehicle and could really take them out of business much more easily than it would before. Whereas before, again, it might have been minor damage. Now it seems like it could actually snowball pretty damn quickly. And finally, of course, last but not least, healing of wounded ground crew members. Due to numerous requests, we're also considering the possibility of introducing healing for injured ground crew members. How do crew injuries currently affect gameplay? When calculating the repair time, active crew members that have been skilled are taken into account. Knocked out crew are considered not skilled. The percentage of remaining health is linearly converted into a repair time multiplier in the range from 0.5 to 1. The average value is calculated for the entire crew in the vehicle. For calculating reload time, only loaders are used. In their case, the percentage of health is converted into a reload time multiplier from 1 to 1.25. A loader who has taken maximum possible damage but is still conscious has a reload penalty with a parameter value of point of 1.25 from the normal reload time. If they're knocked out, the penalty increases to two times. If there's several loaders, the average value for all of them is calculated. For conscious crew members, skilled crews are taken into account. We want to go with the simplest and easiest to use implementation for healing of wounded ground crew members, the automatic healing of the crew. If the crew does not receive any damage within a given time, their health is restored to a minimum level required to remove most of the penalty for the crew to perform their duties. If any damage is received during the healing process, it stops the countdown to the start of the healing process starts from the beginning. Basically, what this is saying is that rather than, like, let's say them getting some sort of a pay to win, like, crew healing mechanic, like what you have in World of Tanks, your crew will automatically just repair itself right like they've got some sort of nanobots working on the inside of their bodies that will just automatically heal them up to a certain level of health so that now you have zombie crew that are going to be feeding shells into your cannon and then subsequently firing your cannon so pretty cool actually in my opinion i think that this is a little bit of a step up from what they currently have although personally maybe i'm just a little bit old-fashioned i wish that maybe you could heal your crew instead at a base i feel like that would take a little bit more skill to do but hey you know what this is still probably a little bit of a step forward and we don't really know exactly how much they're going to be healed but uh i'm not sure if it's going to necessarily impact gameplay all too much 
Personally, one thing that I would love and that I have been calling for for a long time is that if you're at a base, for example, you should be able to fully repair any module on your tank from whatever condition it's in. So currently, let's say if you have an orange engine, you can repair it. But if your engine is, eh, I don't know, somewhat yellow, you cannot repair it. Much the same goes for transmission, and thus you have a permanent penalty against your engine or transmission when it comes to movement that you cannot fix until it gets even worse, then all of a sudden the game lets you fix it. I'm not entirely sure why that is. You should be able to fix lightly damaged parts at a base. That makes more sense to me than healing of wounded ground crew members, but still, this is still a, a pretty cool thing. Hopefully they can implement the, uh, the full fixing of slightly damaged parts in the future. But otherwise, again, ground vehicles are going to get a little bit more complicated henceforth and uh, again I feel like this is going to really impact the game more so in that if you're quicker than the other player you're going to have a substantially greater advantage than you do even now this is going to be a very big deal and all of these changes whenever they come into effect again likely by summer of this year they're going to fundamentally change ground vehicles in war thunder but that said thanks so much for watching if you don't mind please consider liking commenting subscribing let me know what you guys think about these uh, likely changes in the comments below but either way thanks again see you all on the other side take care everyone